uh, sponsored by OTRAC. I think I should mention that. So today we're pleased to have Hyam Su Noon uh, to be with us. Hyam Su is a PhD candidate at University of Arizona. His research interest is about public transportation planning and technology in intermodal and combined transportation environment. Today we'll talk about a topic is about schedule based public transportation planning models. Okay, without further ado, the floor is yours. Hello, my name is Hyun Suno and uh, thank you for having me here the, for the Friday seminar. And uh, I have been involved in several years for my the dissertation, also including several projects about the public transportation assignment model. And uh, in terms of just the, uh, uh, the project and my dissertation topic, I will just uh, introduce some just the modeling, uh, especially for the schedule-based public transportation planning model and some integration uh, between activity-based model or just a dynamic traffic assignment model. So, let's talk about first the uh, transportation assignment. We have, we just face many uh, choice models, especially for location choice. This is the for long term goal for your just uh, success and uh, because you are here for your uh, Portland State University and uh, so you decide your just a location and uh, basically that's the one type of uh, choice model considering the workplace and the school was to, to live and the nearby here and, uh, and you need to just uh, consider some sort of just income level. And uh, the other type of just the act choice model we can just uh, think about in transportation and uh, after just uh, deciding the location choice, maybe a daily based uh, activity choice model will be just the uh, next. So this is the really just the, uh, the big problem. You need to just uh, think about the daily schedule every day considering the, your work hour the, and the travel time and transportation mode, sometimes you may just change your schedule activity by you just uh, hanging out with just friends. And in detail, we may face the uh, more harder problem, the root choice problem. So simply when you use just the auto, will be just a simple, just the finding out any just the shortest path uh, considering just the parking course and the, just the travel time. But when you use the public transportation, it will be a little bit harder <coughs> considering the part time, the trans transit fare, transit schedule. You need to know about some transit stop location nearby your just the place. So I'm interested in this type of route choice and especially for public transportation. So I want to just uh, first to start with the basic foundation the transportation assignment. In the demand modeling, we call this is the supply side model. So basically we assume usual equilibrium. What is the usual equilibrium? The, it was introduced by Waldrop, the 1952, the meaning that the your journey time in old vouch actually usually are equal and uh, the journey times and less than uh, those which would be experienced by a single vehicle on any unused route. So actually you are using the, the minimize just the, the, the travel time when you make your trip. The, if you have a fully just the, uh, if you have a full information of all just the route information, the travel time, and the, also another just the big assumption in here is that you know you are super uh, reasonable when you just choose your, your the, uh, the route. So for the Waldrop's user equilibrium model, and uh, back months first just to formulate the optimization problem of this the usual equilibrium model, 1956. And the uh, representative solution algorithm is uh, Frank Wolf uh, uh, introduced in 1956. And we also just uh, think about a little bit the relaxed version of the rationality and the, especially for the root choice model, you can just uh, choose the any type of route and the bot, sometimes you are not perfect the information itself is not perfect. So you can just use exactly the same random utility, random utility theory and uh, like uh, applying just a logic type of model. 
So this stochastic usual equilibrium model was introduced by Fisk 1980. And let's, uh, with this, the, the basic, the usual equilibrium foundation, let's just talk about the transit assignment, especially on a transit schedule network. So let's think about the one, just the example, and uh, especially for understanding passenger behavior. At this stop, we have uh, two bus routes. And uh, arriving at your destination, first route, just the headway is uh, 10 minutes. And the second route to arrive at your destination, just the headway is 6 minutes. So when you assume your average travel time is uh, 20, 20 minutes for both route 1 and route 2, what are you going to take? Route 1? Raise your hands, please. Or oh, route 2? Raise your hands. Or oh, the other? Who's, who's going <laughs> to take the other? No? The actual solution you, you need to think about, the actual answer is just the taking anyone coming earlier, considering both. The reason is actually for you can decrease your waiting time as considering both route. Like just the 10 minute headways, the six times uh, per hour, you can just submit. And the six minute headways, the 10 times, when you're just uh, making it together, actually you can meet 16 times per hour. So actually, you, your waiting time is decreasing when you just consider both. So you can take any bus coming earlier. That's the best solution. So when you think about a path, shortest path, but the, this is a little bit weird, but the, we need to think about these two paths. This is, can be just one path. We call a hyperpath. That's for best strategy, as you're considering the, uh, this uh, uh, frequency of the bus arriving. So we call this the frequency-based uh, transit assignment model. But how about this case on a schedule, transit schedule? Uh, to do that, actually, we need to assume the another the part, the PAT, preferred arrival time. You may have uh, any just preferred arrival time for the specific time by time boundary, 8 to 8.20. So when you think about the exactly same example, we have a route 1 and route 2. We have a little different options, the leaving 7.30, and the other one is 8. And for route 2, we'll have the 7.31, 7.41, 7 7.51. When you have this, the, uh, the alternatives leaving at your stop, so exactly, also exactly having the 20 minute travel time, what are you going to take? So your alternatives may be like these three, because uh, to arrive at the, the preferred arrival time, leaving 8 will be just arrive at 8.20, 7.41 will arrive at 8.01, and 7.51 will arrive in the middle just at uh, 8.11. So you may have uh, choose one of those, but uh, if you are the super reasonable, you may definitely just uh, taking eight and uh, just arriving eight twenty because you don't need to leave earlier. So this is the best option, but uh, you may think uh, I'm a little different preference. So you may choose this or that one. So we may think about a little bit stochastic behavior. Uh, also, we can just uh, think about the hyperpath, a similar type of model, the using this schedule options. And uh, another big problem is the congestion. When you have uh, any public transportation, the uh, transit vehicle capacity problems, congestion happens. As I know, just uh, here, the max has some problem of some congestion. So. In this congestion level, on the example, she's arrived earlier, and uh, he's arrived a little bit later, then just the bus is moving. And uh, this is the route one, and uh, just stopping by, stop I. And in this case, who's going to take the first priority of a boarding? Meaning that the passengers sitting on this bus will take the first priority if congestion happens. Because they're sitting on here. 
and at this stop I. Then next, she will take the next priority of boarding. The he will be a third in the case. Boarding or not may be uh, dependent on the, just the residual capacity of the, this, the transit vehicle. Okay, as I explained, and uh, this one, then the third one. So this is the type of uh, asymmetric the relation, the uh, according to your just the, uh, the the situation, sitting on a bus or just uh, arriving earlier, arriving later, and uh, when you consider this type of capacity constraint, we will just the uh, especially for these two the route, uh, especially arrival time dependent and the cases. And uh, we can just uh, think about the two types of soft capacity or hard capacity, the models. Soft capacity is the in terms of a model. And mm, we actually just allow some violation. And uh, but finally, at the end of the iteration, so final solution, we may not just uh, see any type of just capacity violation. But uh, in terms of just the, the progress of a model, we actually allow some the, uh, the violation case uh, of a transit vehicle. The hard capacity doesn't allow to just making any type of just capacity violation in the middle of just the, the, the model, the, the running. So this is the another question and uh, for the equilibrium. I talked shortly about the equilibrium. That's the, when you use your just uh, any type of just a path, there will be your just a minimized the shortest path. And uh, that will be the same to other just path used by others. If you have exactly the same origin and destination, and also just less than other unused to the paths. In this case, this is a little different. This is the transit case. Let's talk about first the system optimal and the usual equilibrium. So in this example, we have uh, three routes. The upper one is the route one, and the route two is uh, in the middle, just, just passing through the stop I, and the route three is the bottom one. We have a cost capacity. This is the cost, 10. Uh, this is the, uh, the capacity of the network, the passenger vehicle, or the transit vehicle capacity. This is all 20 here. When you have a demand 20 for the origin destination, so what will, what's going to just the, the best solution in terms of just the decreasing your the total network cost? This is the uh, sending the as many as possible the, the flows on the shortest path. Then just the maybe left one will be assigned to the very next shortest path. That will be the solution like this. Using this path, sending this Y. Because of the, this path, cost is a 15, the second one is a 20, the third one is 25. Sending 20 the, on this path, the take, uh, taking just a 15, the cost, and the next one is the actually blocked by this path, and the, at, its, at this point, by just capacity 20, and the left one will be assigned one here, the bottom one, but uh, taking 25. If you are generous, the passenger will take the bottom one, but if you are not, I want to just decrease my to every time. Definitely you will take this one. Then what happens? The one of those using this route will be denied by the priority of boarding because the passenger using this path will take the first priority. So the one of those definitely need to use the bottom one. So he will just change it, taking this second middle one. So finally, we may have a solution like this. Sending all the flows according to your just the priority of boarding. If the, the congestion happens, then just the left over will be assigned to the bottom one. That's the, the solution for the user equilibrium we are thinking about. But previous one we call the system optimal. Why? The generous one people, one passenger will take just a longer path. But Usually, we just uh, are not just the generous. We want just to take a shortest path. So finally, this is the we, we think just that this is the usual equilibrium. 
So, and the another part is just to cast the user equilibrium. So, we are not just the perfect, every information we cannot gather, and we have a random the term, random utility theory can be applied over here. The behavioral assumption, the passenger behavior is on random utility, not on deterministic behavior. Instead of choosing just the shortest path, you may just think about multiple uh, choices, multiple paths, and for you just uh, the final choice, but not just the fully the deterministic case. You are not just perfect for you, just the rationale, the, the, the behavior. So path cost will be given like a deterministic cost and there was a random term of the path. Maybe deterministic uh, cost will be uh, defined by the travel time, the waiting time, transfer time, or just number of transfers. In this case, when you use the, this path cost with random term, and uh, the exactly same user equilibrium can be thought. But the different thing is you are not, the belie you just believe that sh the shortest path will be you're just the best shortest path, but not sure that's the real shortest path or not because of this random term over here. So when we make this the type of just uh, the path, and uh, I, I just uh, developed the, the, uh, the hyperpath, the similar type of the hyperpath used in the strategy on the frequency-based transit assignment, especially for the, the, uh, the schedule-based model. Here, when you think about this a simple example, this is the exact, the exact same schedule. The, here, each link stands for, the, uh, each link has the departure time and arrival time. So in this example, the, this, the vehicle leave at 7 and arrive at 32 using this link. So we have uh, four routes, and uh, if we have a uh, preferred arrival time, uh, 20 and 30 boundary, and maybe these two are the best option when you're just uh, making just uh, going backward, when you just uh, create the, our path because according to your preferred arrival time. So maybe possibly we can just uh, choose any shortest path like this. Or simply I need to consider a little bit of just the choice options and maybe like this, considering the alternatives generation. But when you think about this type of a hyperpath model, and uh, I want to just add one more term. When you just create the hyperpath, we can directly add this log term. This is the root choice model. The you know about the sum, the mode choice model, that's the exact same, and this is the nested logic structure. Think about exactly the same example. The we are just going backward, arriving at the, uh, here, just the link B1, arriving at link B2. So we can definitely just uh, develop our just the cost. The cost is in here, CB1 hat, CB2 hat. So we also consider the any transfer cost of these two separate link. And uh, finally, we may think about some sort of the cost. So for the, we call just the weight cost. When you think about the weight cost, and I can, we can just uh, implement the uh, log sum over here. That's the load, that's the logic structure. But you can just uh, build your path from destination to origin. So that's the core hyperpath. After just building your hyperpath cost, and that's exactly the same logic probability can be applied as just descending your just the nest. For the solution models, uh, for this model, we developed uh, the uh, deterministic change assignment model or, or just the stochastic change assignment model. And uh, definitely we will use the weighted cost considering transport, ti transport time, waiting time in vehicle or out of vehicle travel time. For the determinist case, as we talked, and uh, we will use the shortest path model. And uh, the recommended just the methodology is the MSA. This is the, the averaging, average the, the flows by iteration to iteration. Averaging flow and next iteration to averaging for your next shortest path. 
and or we can just apply any type of just analytic model and uh, maybe you know about uh, some path based model or just bushy based model so uh, the, for the the, the uh, stochastic trench assignment model and uh, definitely we will we use the same just weighted cost and the uh, hyperpath will be uh, with the uh, low sum weighting function that's the the exact same stochastic model the MSA model MSA methodology can be applied also and uh, other possible the path based model or if you want to just think about the different type of uh, the, the stochastic you may think just the probability model and uh, especially for you, you, you don't want to just add the you don't want to consider overlapping problem the hyperpath this is the logic problem you know IIA property and uh, uh, independent of the, the irrelevant alternatives that's the same ha the same thing happens on the the past generation using the hyperpath so with this the basic theoretical background we developed the uh, named the, the fast trips that's the the transit assignment model and so I would just shortly talk about uh, some impossible integrations with uh, the fast trips fast trips flexible assignment and simulation tool for transit and intermodal passengers the name is pretty long but uh, looks fast <laughs> that's the reason we bring actually it was a tram but kind of slow so <laughs> my advisor changed the name <laughs> the, we have uh, two uh, the two models the basic models the simulation based model and analytic model the mathematical model and the, as, as key components we have a passenger assignment a passenger simulation and we also considering some of the intermodal assignment considering the optimal park and ride location so here as you can see we use GTFS how many of you know about the GTFS okay and the GTFS is the uh, the great one the uh, kind of just collaboration with just the uh, Google and uh, other just change agencies in the United States around the, in the world around the 180 the agencies agencies are sharing their just the transit information with Google so that's the exactly the same the uh, map showing you just the uh, the Google map website and uh, as you know this the GTFS the birthplace is here Portland and uh, the one just the student working at the uh, University of uh, Berkeley uh, University of California Berkeley and uh, he developed this GTFS and uh, here's the first test bed and uh, for the fast stream model we have uh, another capability of the integration with other planning models uh, we call the, the uh, DTA model dynamic traffic assignment model the example is just dynasty activity based model they seem so for the integration with the fast trips and uh, especially for dynamic traffic assignment we can the play with the multimodal or just the intermodal assignment and uh, the test models we have is the dynasty or dynamic or multi this is the offspring of the dynasty developed by one student uh, the of the developer dynasty and uh, we tested the toy based model activity based model integration and uh, we partially tested the uh, well the activity choice model one example is the open Amos so this is the one the uh, example DTA simulation over here and the fast trip the hour development and the basically we assume the demand is a given the for the case like DSIM, DSIM is a 12 based model so you can have all the just the flat the activities the so there will be the uh, demand directly just embedded in the uh, both the DTA simulation and the fast trips and as we know just the we use the Google GTFS schedule and uh, for the routes stops and schedule and the first we will take the intermodal assignment and the order part the order assignment part will be fed back to the uh, DTA model so simulation happens the vehicle movements the auto trains are just moving around then after simulation done in the uh, DTA simulation part just the sending back the information about the passenger arrival especially for the intermodal case the park and ride case 
and the transit vehicle arrival time also just the uh, included in the uh, the the, uh, the return to the uh, transit assignment. So finally, the passenger arrival time and after passing through this transit assignment, we can get any the passenger arrival time and start forging behavior. Uh, so taking one more step, the passenger simulation, because we need to just update some dwell time according to the number of passengers at a specific stop. So we will just uh, the fed back the dwell time of the average is the, the stop according to just the, the passenger simulation. So the finally uh, we will just uh, iterate the several the times uh, until just the dwell time is just converged well. Uh, and just the after just the convergence, we will the report the uh, the transit schemes and uh, any type of just statistics will be just the returned to the demand model for next day just day to day the uh, the activity based model development. So another possibility we can think about is the another activity choice model. This is a little different. The tour based model you can generate all towards 24 hours. But the activity choice model like autonomous, you need to consider discretionary trip. So meaning that you can only decide your just next activity or your destination when you arrive at that uh, area. So it's not possible to get the whole just 24 hours just the history of uh, schedules. And uh, so we need to just uh, uh, make a play just a mini by mini like uh, sending the information arriving at this point and then just uh, sending the information to the activity based model like this iteration. The within the iteration, minute by minute, the 14, 40 minutes. After this is done, will be just the day to day, the integration will be made for next day uh, after just uh, taking some convergence check. And uh, we haven't done just, but we test the, the basic one about uh, how we can just uh, integrate the transit part here. So we can just uh, add a faster model. So also including some the intermodal the part. So exactly the same the scheme, the within day and the day to day part over here. Uh, this is the one case study we have. Uh, we tested uh, on the Sacramento regional area. The this example we just uh, played with the DCM, the tour based model, Dynasty, DTA model, and faster the transit assignment model. This is the area and uh, totally number of stops around 4,000. And the number of routes 110, number of vehicles 3,000. And the parking rise the 23. Here is the red dots, the parking rise, and the blue dots are stops. And uh, here just a little pink is the RIT line. And uh, you can just uh, simply just compare to here, the Portland area. Portland has around 7,000 stops. So this is the, the basic output after just uh, taking two integrated iteration for 24 hour time horizon. Uh, for the, uh, we got the uh, 42 of around 43,000 passengers and the average travel time, average distance is a six mile and the 22 minutes for in vehicle travel time. The total travel time is the around just a 39. And the transport time is around 5.11. And other number of transfers are around 1.338. This is the uh, another output uh, for the transit vehicles. The total vehicles used, uh, the, actually this is a trip, total trips. And around 3,000. And the travel distance is around 10 miles. And uh, the speed is around 50 miles per hour. The linked passenger trips, ridership. This is for every trip, uh, not considering just a transfer. The linked trips and just the counting the trips, the ridership for each the uh, trip segment, the stop point and, and the the alighting point, and the average loading for each route around the seven passengers, and the uh, average dwell time is the seven seconds, a little bit shorter than what I expected. But the, the important thing is that this is not calibrated model. This the calibration is a little different. That's the next step we haven't done. This is the one just the possibility we just stay applying little different numbers. This is the possible output, and uh, this is the output. 
And in here, this is the uh, analytic model version of output. This is the, uh, the simulation-based model outputs. I can just uh, show shortly the, uh, the outputs over here. This is the, for the, uh, the passenger, the number ID here. So you can have here is the origin, here is the destination. In this case, this is the blue lines, this is the access link. And uh, over here, th this is the uh, egress link. And so maybe uh, the load profile is uh, similar, but uh, for each trip. So you may have a different just the, the thickness uh, according to your just the loading. And uh, so the, this is the, uh, the another output we can create. Here the red line, red line is for the scheduled time, like a, the GTFS, Google GTFS schedule time. And the blue lines are for the simulated time in the hours of simulation using Dynasty. So this is another the uh, load profile and the uh, number of passengers that loaded at each stop. So this is for the, the pattern. The, here's just the peak, the, actually over just the 50. So finally, this is uh, my presentation today. And uh, this is the final question I want to make. When was the first transit system introduced? Let me guess. 1910, 1970, then 1750, oh, even lower, 1660. Which one? A, B, C, even D? Okay, someone knows. 1662, horse-driven public transportation system introduced by the mathematician inventor the Blaze Pascal. And uh, thank you for this presentation. I have to answer if you have any questions. Um, does Dynasty or other DTA models, does it typically have a transit assignment component? Dynasty doesn't have, uh, as I know, just BSIM has. The, the, it's all the, uh, the inter also including intermodal capability. And, uh, but in this case, the main just the, uh, the highlight that we want to highlight is the also acting together with activity-based model, DTA model, and also including fast transit assignment model. Okay, yeah. um, I guess a follow-up to that. Mm -hmm. um, is did you do any validation of the model, uh, any calibration validation of the model's no, effects? Uh, right, okay. right now, just, uh, we haven't done just for the calibration, but the, we may just uh, use some the smart card data set and we test, we calibrated with different area, Minnesota area, and uh, we have some the uh, onboard survey data for the Sacramento area, but uh, we haven't done. We just uh, developed the model, that's, that's all. Okay, thank you. Not, I, I do want, could you talk a bit about your board, Sharp C Pan B? What, yes, the, the acronym of the Strategic Highway Research Program. And uh, this is the real project I was involved in and uh, funded by FHWA. And uh, this is the area, the Sacramento area. We just uh, we, uh, took a charge of developing the model. The, Sacramento area. And uh, we are working together with Cambridge Systematics and uh, the, uh, uh, let me see, the Sacramento regional area, the metropolitan, the MPO, and uh, yeah, the ourselves. Uh, I, another question I huh? can think of uh, is, wh what are the computational challenge and as well as 
data you mentioned about data yes. to collecting data to do validation for this type of model what so uh, in terms of just challenge? in terms of developing model the first challenge is the computation time actually but to run this model we need to actually take uh, one or two days uh, just the i5 motion and uh, put the, this one but uh, we need to take uh, only for the one it iteration so that's the computation challenge part and uh, but also the data set uh, especially for the validation we are we are using the, the dynamic DTA model dynamic therapy assignment model and uh, so when you just uh, the calibrate uh, the challenging thing is a time dependent pattern will be just a change so we need to just uh, uh, shift a little bit with just the departure time choice model and uh, in our just the DTA component also just for the transit we need to validate the number of passengers and if it is just the fit, the fit well but the uh, important problem is the data set and uh, we don't have uh, enough data set boarding counts is only just available if we have a smart card data set they will be good but uh, even with the smart card data set and uh, it's really hard to just uh, estimate and just uh, the lighting point because the uh, tap on tap out system if we have both we can just uh, find out just the whole the diagram of the the path in the transit, but uh, only having just the the boarding tab, and uh, it isn't enough. Yeah. It is not enough to just to develop the model to, to, to calibrate the model. Okay. Basically, we were looking at a big Beijing data set, and we looked at. Uh, mm -hmm you can get consistent like kind of repeat customer trips so you can get um, boarding and alighting if you assume that they come from the same place that they alighted right yes. so then you can they, connect they, those they, and actually use that for yes in that case we can we can have uh, the full just a tour set if we have that that's possible that we can apply that yes right but like uh, right now just my advisor is transferred to the uh, the Australia the University of Queensland and uh, the Brisbane, the city has the really nice yeah, smart card data set that they actually require like a tap on, tap off both. So we can just create all the tour. In that case, we may just calculate more easily. Right. Thank you. Yeah, I, I try to make this uh, <laughs> not using any type of math. <laughs> That's the best I can do. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Uh, another question I, I will throw at you is, is uh, what do you think uh, will go next? Are we going to able to improve the data collection effort here? Mm -hmm. Uh, enough so we'll make tools like uh, the transit assignment along with DTA model that will be useful enough for for our activity uh, working with activity based model in, in a short period of time in five ten years or mm -hmm. even maybe three years time period do you think are there are you aware of any effort that's that's ongoing in the U.S. Uh, for transit agencies and maybe other public agencies trying to go that route? Okay. Oh, I cannot just point out the, the, what is exactly the question. But the, I can answer, like a, right now just we developed the initial model, or the activity-based model is just, just the, came up there. Yeah. And uh, right now just the, Many MPOs are thinking about applying the activity-based model their own. Just for the, the example is the Sacramento, no, San Francisco. They really actively just try to just embed their the activity-based model, also including the DTA model integration. So maybe it uh, will take a little bit of time. But uh, for the trend assignment, trend assignment component is developed. Also, if if you don't have any just congestion problem, that's the one shot. Just the path of generation. That's the all. So you can just uh, simply sign the, the passengers. Also, the any just the commercial software can just uh, play well. 
the uh, transit assignment, but uh, that's not exactly why we, what we are doing. But uh, BC may have some the similar component, but uh, to understand it more is the reasonable transit passenger behavior with some congestion. And uh, I think it's just that we are ready to just uh, the, the show the some results, but uh, maybe uh, will it take around just the maybe next 10 years and the to just the, the used uh, in terms of using the, uh, the any just the MPUs. Uh, I believe the Google Transit format um, mm -hmm. just has the description of the lines, and it doesn't have transfer locations. How are you modeling the ability to transfer, like walking across the street, not transferring at the stop, you know, yes. that's shared with other lines, but but walking? That's a great question. The Google uh, GTFS file doesn't show the any just transport point, but uh, in here, the Portland, they actually show some just a transport point. I don't know just uh, what the, uh, the analogy uh, under the, the uh, data set. But we usually don't have uh, any just the transport point. But in this case, we just, uh, we can generate by ourselves and uh, making kind of around the radius area, the certain amount of radius area. Maybe just the, you cannot just go further like the 30 minutes working, walking, and the over just the one hour walking. Maybe uh, it's possible just to, if you have any activity, but we usually don't do that. So we act, we in this model we use the Euclidean distance for each just the stop point, the stop point, every stop point, the stop point. No, we have uh, just the trip line, and according to the trip, we have uh, just the basic the stop points and we prepared in advance to apply the model. Thank you. Okay, um, another thing I, I want to ask is that uh, in kind of benefit cost analysis, uh, are you aware of kind of how much given the sophistication level of DTA along with transit assignment process, uh, what's your sense of, say, for what size of agency it's worthwhile to spend money to develop a DTA, to adapt the DTA along with transit assignment, and how no. much benefit <laughs> they can get uh, from this type of model? Well, maybe this is the planning model, but uh, <laughs> that's the hard question, but I don't know. throw at you to see whether you can answer. How much conservative our results will be if we implement the wardrobe's user equilibration approach? Oh, what the, could, you, could you repeat again? How much conservative our result will be if yeah, maybe I... But uh, I can just explain. The user equilibrium, you know, mm -hmm. the determinist case uh, we can just work with this, but uh, we actually using the deterministic the, the the model in the transcad and type of just the commercial software or so. So it's possible to just generate the solution, but also we I also introduced the uh, the, uh, the discrete choice the type of model stochastic user equilibrium will just uh, show the much better the solution. One from online is, how does this model account for preferred transit mode when transferring city like Portland that have light rail, streetcar, bus, and transit rail intersecting? So how how do you how do you, how does the model account for different modes? I guess uh, so of transit. Uh, in this case, the uh, this hype, for example, just the searching path, you can just use any type of model if you have any just the weighted cost. 
if you have a specific preference of uh, each mode, uh, you can just add on your just path. And uh, when the cost is uh, the, uh, the less than others, you will be just prefer to have take that take the the mode. But uh, the basically, we don't consider the any type of model mo uh, the modes. But uh, we consider just this any just a link link just the the instead of just considering mode. So for example, hyperpath, you can just apply the bike route choice model or bike and ride the intermodal route choice model or just auto and uh, for the park and ride the route choice model. So yeah, th because this is a generic model and uh, you can apply anywhere. How exactly do you reach convergence when you're shifting flows? So this case for the hyperpath-based model, and uh, <laughs> we actually just use MSA. Oh, you use MSA. MSA, but uh, I have actually another model, just the, the using the gradient projection. That's the path-based model. Mm -hmm. So in the case, we actually utilize the entropy term the, for each just the path. So actually playing together, exactly the same just the model we use in the order that we can just decrease the hour just the the, okay. the later business convergence. Oh, if you're interested, in, I can just show my model. <laughs> no, I'm just wondering if it changes. Okay. okay. If there is no other questions, uh, we can end our discussion. So let's. Stand